Hey there guys, John here of course, and today we're going fishing. Now there's actually going to be a little bit of a twist on this fishing trip. Are we going to be needing our old fishing rod? Not for this video or not, so we can just toss that baby. Are we going to be needing a bunch of fancy tackle and equipment like I got loaded up here in the old vest? Now we're not going to be needing that for this video either, so that can go. What we're going to be using is just the good old fishing survival bracelet. Now, as some of you guys may know, a little while back I did a video showing how to make a standard cobra weave paracord bracelet with fishing tackle incorporated into it. Now, little did I know at the time that, that was going to become my highest, my highly viewed video. And uh, along with that, I've gotten a lot of uh, requests to actually show the bracelet in action, which is what we're going to do today. So let me get this broke apart here. We'll go over the contents just really quick, not going to rehash the other video. And we'll get this rigged up using only the bracelet and the natural resources in the area. And we're going to catch us some fish. Okay guys, here's the situation. You're out, you're filming a YouTube video on how to catch fish using only your paracord bracelet. And, wait, actually that doesn't sound very exciting. Okay, new scenario. You're out, you're in a survival situation. You've been out a couple days, stumbling around, lost, can't find your way home. You're getting hungry by this point. Well, you stumble across some water. Guess what we got? The paracord fishing bracelet. So, first thing we're gonna wanna do, of course, is uh, pop this baby off. Now. As you can see, this is just a standard Cobra Weave bracelet, guys. There's absolutely no visual difference between this and any other uh, paracord bracelet you've seen. So anyway, uh, which makes it more comfortable to wear and it's, it's not bulky, anything like that, which is kind of my point in stating that. So what we're gonna do here is start turning this baby apart. We'll actually go to the tag ends and uh, try to work those loose. Now, of course, nothing ever comes easy on video especially when you're doing it in one take. So uh, I'm assuming this is gonna be no different. So bear with me here. That's where we use the teeth. All right. Yeah, nothing like survival to bring out the savage in ya. Yeah. All right, now you've got your tag ends torn apart. And this is one area I wanna stop real quick and just note a quick change, the, uh, this bracelet from the original bracelet. Now this actually came from uh, viewer comments and some of the changes to this bracelet were actually due to some of those helpful comments. And I just wanna say thanks a lot for posting some of those. Uh, we all learn from each other and that's just one of my favorite parts of YouTube here. Now, one of the comments that was left is in the original bracelet, I actually had the weights uh, in the inner strand. And somebody had uh, just suggested that you may just want to put them near the tag end, which is what I did in this bracelet. So you can see here, once you get that tag end apart, just kind of work it apart. And I have got two very small little split shot uh, sinkers, some weights in there. So uh, there's our weights that we're going to need. And we're actually going to set these somewhere where we hopefully can find them. Now, uh, one other thing along those weights as I'm tearing this apart, um, because that's the next step, of course, is uh, regarding the weights, uh, a lot of you guys had mentioned using uh, lead weights and you know just having those in close proximity to your skin may be a uh, you know concern just due to lead poisoning and things like that. Um, there's a couple different ways around that. Now uh, you can use uh, tungsten weights or stainless steel split shots, which is what I would recommend. However, if you're going to go with the lead weights, you can simply coat those. Uh, with nail polish, a clear nail polish, something like that, and it will just you know get them sealed up. You won't have any concerns like that. Um, honestly, I think the concerns are pretty much minimal anyhow, uh, just regarding that issue due to the, the fact that they are uh, on the interior of the bracelet, and even with sweat and you know just all that, they're they're really going to pose a, a really minor risk. So if you are concerned about that, that's a couple ways around that though. Now. Um, I can see fish jumping out here on the pond, and it uh, looks like uh, hopefully we're set up for some success here. And I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but uh, I've got a tractor going over here, which is always helpful, by the way, in a survival situation. Uh, some of the things that you want to watch out for are um, you know, rescue, of course. You don't just want to be sitting out here by the pond fishing with your bracelet. There's a tractor about 50 feet away, so uh, just a quick tip. You guys, you guys probably knew that one, but uh, I just like sharing my knowledge. So, anyway, I'm going to get this tour apart. 
All right, well, we've got the uh, bracelet uh, pretty much torn apart here. Now, one thing I wanted to say on this one is uh, it is a dual color bracelet, therefore it is spliced. You can utilize the same method if you want, uh, you know, just a single strand piece of paracord uh, that's going to keep your full eight, eight, uh, eight and a half feet of paracord intact if you want the full use out of that. So anyhow, um, getting down to it here is uh, this is the meat in the matter right here. What I've got is a fishing line and you can see it's a braided fishing line uh, wrapped around the entire uh, two strand inner core of this bracelet. And uh, of course you can fish with the, uh, the uh, inner strands of the paracord itself. However, it's a, it's a really bright white uh, strands and they're fairly thick, especially for uh, you know, uh, smaller fish, things like that. Now if you can come across uh, some larger fish like you know, catfish, salmon, uh, whatever you know, the, the case may be in areas uh, that you live, you know, then, um, you know, by all means, the, those, uh, you know, inner strands are going to work a lot better. However, uh, nothing beats fishing line for fishing. It's just like any other thing, the right tool for the, for the job. So uh, that's one of the reasons that, of course, that I included the fishing line. Now, along with that is the fact that you can uh, obviously keep your paracord bracelet intact by, um, you know, not having to dig into it to get a uh, fishing line. Or if you uh, you know don't need to fish, you can also use the braid line for uh, snares, uh, just for cordage. And uh, one of the reasons I went with this braided line is that it is a 30 pound uh, breaking strength um, cordage here. And so if you need cordage without wanting to sacrifice your main length of paracord, you obviously have that capability uh, you know, by utilizing your fishing line. And in this instance, um, I've got about 12 to 15 feet of line wrapped around here. And uh, you can really pack on some line if you want to, guys. You can probably get, um, I'm venturing to guess, you know, over 50 feet easily of fishing line uh, wrapped around the inner core without affecting the look of the bracelet whatsoever. So, um, as you can see, I've got the uh, line uh, unwrapped from the majority of the bracelet. And we're actually getting into uh, another component now. And what that is, is... Um, some of the fishing tackle that we've included in here. And I've just put a, a little piece of electrical tape over um, the components in here just to protect them a little bit. Um, once it was wrapped, it helps kind of keep everything in place. So let me get this unwrapped and we'll see what we got in here. Okay, now as you can see, I've just unwrapped a really small little package from the bracelet. And this was attached to the inner, the inner core here. And first of all, what we've got, and this is a, another departure from the original video, is that I've got just a bit of tin foil here. Now, tin foil is um, something that I've been using since uh, I can remember since I was a kid. It was a, just a little trick my dad taught me of uh, just a really simple fish attractant. And you can use that just to wrap a small piece around your weights. And it, uh, you know, if you're stream fishing, trout fishing, uh, something like that. It acts as a uh, attractor for the fish uh, to find your bait a little bit easier. And also, uh, you can make a makeshift lure out of this if you don't have any bait. You can actually uh, just put a, a small piece of this and rig it to your hook or on your hook even. And it'll act in some instances as, as enough of a flasher to actually catch a fish on just the tin foil. So really great addition there. Now, inside of the tin foil, what I've got is a couple of hooks. Now, I've got a couple different uh, things here, and this is also different, uh, kind of an upgrade from the original. I've just got some really small hooks, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but just a really uh, small hook. I think we're running uh, 10 or 12 here on this one. And what I've also got, and this is uh, the upgrade, is just a uh, small beadhead nymph. Now, if you can see that little guy or not, but he's tiny. Now, a lot of the times, um, you know, if you've got the line, you've got your uh, weights, you've got your hooks, uh, you got all that, um, you know, bait may be an issue. You're going to want some way to obviously attract and catch the fish. Now, there's no shortage of bugs in the outdoors, as you guys know, and uh, whether that's a, a bumblebee or, you know, a beetle or even an ant, you know, will do the trick um, when you're fishing like this. Um, you know, you just can't beat it. But if in the instance you cannot find some type of natural bait, it's, uh, you know, really good to have something like this fly along. Uh, it's, you know, a presentation in and of itself. 
And now I've got motorcycles going off, so I've just got like search and rescue all over here. Tractors, motorcycles, uh, they're all out looking for me, so I should be home by uh, uh, at least enough time to upload this video. So anyway guys, let me get rigged up here and uh, we'll actually proceed to the fish catching stage. Okay, so we're all rigged up here. Let me show you what I got really quick. I just took a simple branch. Now, you can hand line this, of course. Um, I just like the branch with the amount of line that I got because it gives me a little bit of extra reach out there. And what I've done is simply attached a single split shot, uh, probably about eight to 10 inches above the hook. And I've just got my snelled hook on here. And rather than going with the fly that I had, um, because I, I felt that that was a little too easy, uh, I just wanted to show and illustrate uh, the natural um, you know, baits that can be found. And this is, unfortunately, this is really pulley guys. Uh, please forgive me. I love these little guys. I used to play with them as a kid all the time. Um, it's kind of suck sacrificing this guy. But anyway, uh, the point is that you can find uh, natural baits. And this is a natural bait right here. And let's see if we can catch a fish. All right guys, well, the roly-poly was a fail. He actually came off the hook when I got a bite and wasn't able to catch the fish. So what I've done was switched over to the little beadhead nymph that I have here. Now, this is actually really good actually that this happened because it just illustrates um, the importance of uh, having more diverse equipment or, you know, like I said earlier, the most bang for your buck. And, um, you know, it's getting toward dark, I'm running out of daylight. And uh, we're gonna go to the nymph instead of searching for more insects, uh, you know, that we may or may not catch fish on. So we'll see how this does. Ha <laughs> ha! The sweet smell of victory. Or the look of a slimy fish, whatever. Wow. He poked me. And he swallowed it good. But, uh, anyway, just uh, goes to show that the old uh, bracelet works. It really doesn't take much, guys. Um, like I said, the, the biggest part of fishing is obviously uh, knowing a little bit about the fish, uh, a little bit about the basics of fishing, um, and it's really not about the, um, you know, necessarily all the gear and equipment that you have with you. And uh, you can get him back in the water. But anyway, guys, like I said, um, I just wanted to show this. as This has kind of been a goofy video. And I'm not really, uh, didn't, my intention wasn't to um, uh, minimize the importance of survival gear or, you know, survival situations, things like that. I mean, it is good to be prepared. Uh, but it's also uh, important, I believe, uh, to have a good attitude and to have fun, uh, things like that. Those are the things that keep your spirits up. And so uh, that's the way I've tried to have this video come across. So anyway, like I said, just to summarize really quick, um, you know, the uh, bracelet, uh, just some fishing line, little weights, uh, some bait scrounge in the area on a little hook. Uh, speaking of hooks really quick, when you do go with hooks, go smaller because you can catch small fish with a small hook and a big fish with a small hook, but you can't catch a small fish with a really big hook. And a lot of the times, it's gonna be fish like these bluegill or you know chubs or just smaller fish that are what you're going to be catching. You're not gonna necessarily get yourself a 10 or 15 pound uh, fish, you know, for a meal in a survival situation, you know. So um, it's just uh, getting these little things that uh, that you can get. Oh, I can hear sirens. I guess that means they're coming to get me finally. Whew, my ordeal is long over. I mean, it's a good thing because I threw my fish back too, so I wouldn't be having dinner. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. Like I said, wanted to have some fun with this video. Actually show the bracelet in use, have a little bit of fun, and um, of course get out fish. That's what I do. So anyway, that's all I got. And until next time, you guys take really good care, and we'll be seeing you soon.